All righty. Uh, welcome to the latest episode of the Fuzz Club. And we're talking about one of my favorite Desert Rock, Stoner Rock albums in any recent time period. Um, self-titled Flomosa album from 2020. So before we dive into it a little bit, let's do some introductions real quick. Chris from Stay Dead, you want to go first? What's up, everybody? Chris, I play guitars and Stay Dead. I'm Ryan from uh, High Desert Queen. Blake, I'm Blake from Iwas. I'm Eddie from Lodge of the Opium Church and the Endless. I'm uh, Bucky from various spots, Doom Charts, Ripple Effect. And probably some of you guys might know me from Bandcamp. I've been kind of curating a collection over there for over a decade. So nice. Glad to be part of the show tonight, guys. Yeah, thanks for joining us tonight. Yeah, yeah. Pat? Uh, I'm Pat from Monster Riff. Paul. Uh, I, I guess that's me, uh, Mr. Peddler. <laughs> Paul, Paul the Peddler. <laughs> right on. <clears throat> All right, so Slow Moses self-titled album from 2020. Uh, these dudes are from Norway. So they, I think, were self-proclaimed uh, tundra rock, not desert rock, which makes sense. But um, I, they also called it desert rock from cold country, which also makes sense. Um, but it's a hell of a desert rock, stoner rock album, in my opinion. Anybody else? Not quite Sweden, but close. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yep. Once again, another good band from the Nordic area, right? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. I read that today, though. I like the Tundra Rock. Tundra Rock, I read that yep. The first time th this morning, and, and I thought that was really, there should be more of that because there's so much good music up there. Yeah. I, I could see that being a, th being a thing. I've never heard of that Tundra Rock. Yeah. Um, we kind of talked about how, like, when people ask what would be a good introduction to, like, Stoner Rock and stuff, we talked about on the Odio episode that that's a good one to start with. But I always feel like this album, as far as recent music is a good go-to for me of like what that sound is that I'm looking for the kind of guitars, the tone, the kind of like punkish feel to it, kind of like upbeat drive through the desert kind of thing. So this album is definitely one of those that I always think like, if I'm going to recommend some new shit, this would be at the very top of the list. I think when this came out, I was in like the, when I, my Spotify warp came at the, the or wrapped came at the end of the year, I was like the top 1% for this album. Like I, I just, had it on repeat constantly. It's definitely one of those that I recommend to a lot of people. Well, I mean, it's just so fucking catchy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, I, agree for sure. I don't know if it's physically possible. As long as you can tolerate guitar-driven music, I think that you can find a song on this album, at very least, that you're like, fuck yeah, I, I dig this. Yeah. It is a really diverse album. There's a lot of different style influences you can hear all over the place. And a lot yeah. of different emotions. Mm -hmm. I'm glad to hear you say punk, man, because because I kind of felt that punky vibe, especially through the vocals. Yeah, and um, and um, I love the the fuzzy tone. So, yeah, you know, I kind of termed it uh, psychedelic stoner um, fuzz rock. <laughs> to the the punk thing, like I don't know what it was. I think one of the first songs that I heard was "Nothing New." There's nothing new under the sun, and. It gave me this vibe, and I don't know how many of you remember the Jackass 1 soundtrack, <laughs> but it just, like, for some reason, stuff in my mind was, like, that Jackass 1 soundtrack, and I didn't know why. I never, I never went back and listened to it, and it, it has that, reminds me of that soundtrack. It has so, that kind of era. The, the sound of it was, is similar to a lot of bands in that era when that Jackass came out, late 90s, early yeah. 2000s. Mm -hmm. So I went little... back a couple of days ago and looked it up and I was just like, what is it about that soundtrack that reminds me of this album so much? And I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but there is a lot of that kind of upbeat, like driving guitar. And there's also like the vocals, the way he kind of like shouts the, the lyrics at so sometimes is very punkish. And that soundtrack yeah. is very punkish, yeah. but it's also just very fun and upbeat. And then there's also a Ramon song on there, California Sun. And maybe that was like part of it was nothing new under the sun, California sun. I don't know. But still, when I hear that song and, and the album as a whole, but specifically that song, it just reminds me of that jackass soundtrack for some reason. It's very punk, but 
this is obviously way more like desert stoner, but it definitely has that hint of punk in it for sure. For sure. Well, it yeah. sounds like skateboarding music. Yeah, yeah, it is. yeah. yeah. Like, it, it's it's made to be in a in like a skateboarding or a BMX or like a surfing, like some kind of extreme sports, you yeah. know, video yeah. on YouTube. But it's right. a tundra. Yeah, tundra yeah. skateboarding. There you go. <laughs> I mean, skateboarding so, so, names, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was really ironic that that actual song, There's Nothing New Under the Sun, to be so upbeat. I was waiting for it to be like some doomy kind of thing. but Yeah. Yeah, they have a way of making everything seem a little bit more upbeat. Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing doomy yeah. about this album. No, no. <laughs> no, they even have think- that track. I think it's the track right after Nothing New Under the Sun. In my mind's desert. It's kind of their, their ballad, kind of like the... 90s alt rock kind of vibe. Going yeah, I up. thought that was sounded That's like the so beginning of a Sugar Ray song. song. Yeah, that that intro to that song in my mind's desert has like this yeah. really pop feel to it. Yeah. It's the way they they have the guitars and everything, but then it really turns into like almost like an early Queens of Stone Age song. Yeah, and it's got. That, I had that on my Bandcamp review because this was uh they remind me of somebody back then. I couldn't really. I, I still haven't to this day found out who they remind me of precisely, but. It, I put it would appease fans of Truck Fighters and Queens at Stone Age for sure. Yeah, so it's got that fuzzy tone of Truck I, Fighters, and then the the quirkiness of Queens. I kind of feel Age. a hint of uh, the heavy eyes in there just a little bit. Yeah, mm. I can. Hear I mean, that. what I hear actually, maybe this, especially this kind of ties it back into kind of the discussion of punk, and this is impartial credit to to Chris from Ox because he had pointed out he the vocalist sounds. In a way, his style is similar to Ian MacKay, uh, and so I hear actually a lot of Fugazi in, in this. Like, yeah. it, it's got that that same attitude that it, mm-hmm. it's not like a, a "fuck you" attitude or anything like that per se, but there's just this confidence and assuredness and belief uh, to this album. I feel like, yeah. I agree. It's that thing vocal tone, like vocally. the shouting, like, mm-hmm. like it's like go get them, like kind of yeah. punk, yeah. Those, that kind of punk. Those yeah. vocal melodies are totally Fugazi for sure. Yeah, that's what that's the first thing I recognized was Fugazi. And I think that, and Bucky, I may have read your review because I think in 2020 or I was introduced to the band because someone either read it or someone told me that it reminded them of Truck Fighters and Queens of the Stone Age. And so I was like, I'm in. And I'll be honest, I put it on. I didn't really give it a, a good listen. I just kind of put it on. And I was like, ah, I, I remember thinking like, I like it. It's catchy rock. Uh, but I, I kind of filed it away and didn't really well, listen it, to it. I think part of that, I think that may have happened with, with some folks due to the band name is kind of like blah, kind of like, I mean, it's cool, but it's, and then the album cover is just like black and white, nothing really exciting. So it's an yeah. easy one to yeah. never heard of it. You might just pass it up. Yeah. Oh, another stoner rock. I band. think the record label yeah. kind of threw people off too, because that's not really a stoner rock record. Apollon Records, right? Yeah, yeah. I sold yeah. that when it first came out. When it very first came out, I sold it, and I had a hard time selling them. And and then now I think it's been repressed like multiple times. I think once people found out what it was. They they freaking all ran in and bought that man. So, yeah. yeah, no, this was a big. This one came out. It was a big contender on the Doom charts back when it came out. Mm-hmm. It like we all got a promo or something, and it it got pushed out hard. And it's funny. I was gonna mention it. The same label, the same year, another debut album that came out a couple months before this. Cryptograph. Cryptograph, Cryptograph is a monster. This, so this man. one and Cryptograph were on oh, that yeah. same wavelength that it, back in 2020, and they both, like, I, I, I remember hearing both of them and, like, wow, this is some some cool here. Let's, right. And it was yeah. – it kind of took off. And I think, and I think, I think it, it was because of the Doom Charge. Because I, 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 I listened to it, kind of put it away. Didn't really dive into it, but then when I started seeing it all kind of recognition on the Doom charts, like man, I must have slept on this or something. And I went back in and like actually listened to it, and I realized how because it's really unique. It's the a very unique. They're they they have a it's their sound. I really feel like, and I think a lot of it's vocally, but and I think even this this week as I've listened to it for this podcast, 
I'm like even more impressed with the guitar work than I was than I originally yes. thought it's I was. It's got some intricate you know, I'm, I'm, kind of riffs going on, yeah. like intricate guitar work. Yeah. But I think it's a record that it didn't, I don't know, it didn't grab anybody, but it grows on you. Or it didn't grab me, I'm sorry, but it, it just grew on me big time. And I feel like that's kind of the way it's been with a lot of people. Uh, it seemed to get a lot more notoriety as it's had it been a year or two older now. I it's, think it was really easy right off the bat to dismiss it as like a very simple, straightforward desert rock, stoner rock album. There's not a whole lot of like complex stuff going on. It's very straightforward. But as the years have gone by and more and more people have listened to it, I now see see people with like slow Mosa tattoos and shit. And I'm like, that's a hell of a, a <laughs> thing to do for a band that has one self-titled album out. Like yeah. the, it must have grown on some people because... Upon first listening, thinking it's very like straightforward, and then just to, to get to that level a couple years later, it's like it must have done yeah. something. I was I was talking to my uh, my mixing engineer this this weekend, and uh, he was mentioning that when he was on tour in Europe doing sound, um, he uh, he was wearing a slow Mosa shirt in like the Brussels airport, and someone just came up to him and it was like this dad. Uh, you know, kind of like Ryan, just a dad. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> um, the answer is yes. Yes, dad looking guy. Um, and uh, he came up to him and was like, "Slomosa, I love Slomosa." And and Grant was just like, "You you know who Slomosa is?" You know, so it, it's got this appeal to it that it's just undeniable. Yeah, right. I, and I think it, it took a, a minute for it to catch on that year, but I, they they ended up winning, if I remember correctly, best new band at the the Doomies. Yeah, I think so. Year. Oh, really? Nice. And they were nominated for like maybe best record as well. I think they and lost that, out to the King Buffalo. I see Bucky. Yeah, but that that Doomie was why I listen. Here. <laughs> yeah, no, I got it right here. Yeah, Bucky's yeah. always prepared. Yeah, right. got it ready. I, I knew I had it. I I bought it from. Whenever one of the websites, mine out, man. I don't know where it's at. but it's got it's on Bandcamp. If you go to their page, they've sold. I mean, they have a ton of fans that have bought that album on Bandcamp and a bunch of different presses. That's I mean, them and Cryptograph both like long oh. list of different versions. And I mean, so it did it did pretty well as the years went on. Yeah, yeah, and, and I'm even seeing them tour behind this album now. You know, or like in the past year. Uh, like it's ironic you're wearing that uh Sasquatch hat there, Bucky. But Sasquatch went on tour with them with Orange Goblin, and I was talking to Sasquatch boys, and they were like, Man, the response this band is getting on huh. they're the, they were the they were the opening band for every for every night with Slomosa, with Slomosa, then Sasquatch, then Orange Goblin. That he was like, Man, the response they're getting, people are singing every word. Of course, you listen to the record, it's super catchy, it's, it's a very singable record, it's, it's definitely a singable record. record. And it's super cool that live, you know, like they're they're on the road together. And it was it was that way. And then and then then they just went on tour, just the two of them, Sasquatch and Orange Goblin, to the UK. And they said, man, the response was really really good. And uh, there was fairly, a, I've never seen them live, but a very high energy live show as well. So they've uh, done very well touring behind this record because I imagine they couldn't, you know, when it came out. Sure. And so they're they're doing it now. So they're actually getting a chance to. To, to show that record off and it, it's it, it's doing well for one record they've they've done very well for themselves yeah awesome they got some pressure coming up for number two now <laughs> yeah i i've seen a couple yeah. of their stories on instagram where they're like in the recording studio and and they shared a couple of clips and stuff and you know it is a lot of pressure to to follow up a record like that that gets just kind of like grows and grows in like reputation mm -hmm. yeah. the one thing well, I cryptograph say, released their they they did a debut or follow up this year so i'm like lumping those two together they're both from bergen norway both on the same label both kind of the same type of sound and they they followed up with a pretty solid record with their second one mm. just I thought it was recorded very well um you know the clearness of the vocals and, and even though he's uh shouting them out there you know they're very clear and mm -hmm. just you know, the whole album you, you could tell that it was, it was recorded very well yeah. Sometimes you don't always get that with a lot of stoner rock bands. I like, yeah. uh, I was listening today. I, I like how I, a lot of different songs, they do that where they slow down, like 
they'll be riffing on the guitar and then they just mute the guitars and it's kind of the drums keep going real slow and then it picks up with just a, the vocal riff approach like after the chorus or bridge and it they do that on a few songs it's yeah. it's kind of a cool little like wakes you up yeah they have a way of like building tension really yeah. well and building it and building it and then just like drop it like just dropping it on you and like letting that tension just like blow out and, uh, and make yeah making something that's not heavy really it's really not heavy but impactful but make it heavy yeah 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 that's what I was gonna say. I, I kind of felt like there was little bits of hints of doom in there, almost. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that the last song uh, like, well, has some elements of that. Like it's, it builds up and builds up, and it's kind of it's scary. And then towards the end of some of the songs too, that doom, the more doom sound kind of comes through. Yeah, I forget what song it was, but there was a like it completely changed tunes and went went pretty heavy for a while. Yeah. I got some stats here I, I put down on my notes from like when it came out on the doom charts it it uh it was number 16 in august which i think it came the month it came out and that's then a lot number, lower than i was expecting it was number 16 in september the back-to-back -back months and then it made do you, the, hey, do you remember do you have who was on who was like who were the top bands on that month do you have it in front of you by chance uh shit, i didn't it write got, it down it got, but it, it, got, it, it they got it got buried sounds like yeah that's yeah that's no, a little it, shocking 16. but it made two two months in a row that that's rare anymore yeah, to yeah. get I, in, I, the, I in the top do. 20 two months in a row and then it made the final year-end list for 2020 which is coming out for 2022 pretty soon at the game charts where it's every single vote from the entire year all lumped together and then tallied so it was number 30 for so in of the year sorry. and that's like 1500 albums or something yeah so i mean it's number 30 that's good of, for a day for a debut in, yeah uh in in august of that year it was uh that first cyclona album and then september it was kind and mental nudge the 2020 um, the, was the a, top, uh, like for those two months. 2020 was a banger year. Like I was looking at it, I'm like, man, that was such a good year. Yeah, I, I would say for me, it was probably the last year I really was going heavy. I, I kind of went off the grid the last year or two, but uh, it was 2020 was solid. It just kind of goes to yeah. show, though, that it did fly under the radar for a lot of people. I mean, 16 is a lot lower than I would expect if it came out like now. Like, I, I can't imagine it being anything other than like the top two or three of at least that month, you know, but it, I guess it redeemed itself at the end of the year a little bit with the with the top votes. But and, you know, uh, yeah, 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 it's a great album overall. Just awesome. Bucky, I have a question for you as like, yeah, as a as a long term Doom Charts contributor, I feel like this came out later in the month um, and I feel like albums that come out later in the month sometimes have a harder time charting and mm -hmm. then when they come back in the following month there's so much more competition that it, i think the timing just kind of got away from them it's in terms of charting for the doom charts i i i would say you're right i mean so it came out late and it was and that could be why it was 16 and 16 so it yeah. it got half the support on the first month and then the half yeah. carried over the second yeah. month so that's why it did make two months yeah and then it with the amount of music coming out it's like the contributors get we just get pile drive by album after album and there's so much competition that you you want to you want to put new albums every month like it's hard to go back and revote for the same album with if you've got 20 new albums that came out last right. month you want to give those ones a, a chance to hit the spotlight so right yeah um, and it's getting more that way the more it goes on back when it started like five six seven eight years ago or whatever i think albums they they made it multiple months a lot more i think i remember elder when lore came out elder made it like six months in a row and it, it was like the album of the year that year yeah I mean, and I, for good reason, that was, that's probably been one of my top three albums of the last decade. So, but 
Well, I have to ima- I have to imagine you get a lot more submissions now for the new charts. I mean, it seems like it's overwhelming almost how many. Well, everything's more streamlined. Albums. I mean, we got every year we got easier ways to listen to shit. And, I mean, Spotify, Bandcamp, all the stuff. Like back then, we were downloading. We'd had to download everything to listen to it and put it on our iPods or whatever. <laughs> now it's like you you can listen to endless stuff so easy. Yeah. So. So any uh, favorite tracks on here? We kind of talked about In My Mind's Desert, uh, Nothing New Under the Sun, obviously, but anything else that stands out to anybody? I mean, Horses is one of the catchiest songs that anyone's ever written in this genre. Like, And I I would argue not just one of the catchiest, but I think it's one of the better ones that's been written in Stoner Rock. Which one's that? Horses. horses. The very first oh, track, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's horses. <laughs> it, it's a flawless song. Like as a songwriter, I listen to that and I find it to be very irritating. Um, <laughs> yeah, like in a, yeah, in it awesome is. Like, way. And it and it opens I, the album like a, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like a guitar riff to open. Na 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 na. It's freaking. That's <laughs> awesome. It, mm-hmm. It's so easy and catchy and then that's i think that's probably why i dismissed the record i didn't dismiss the record i listened to it put it away uh and then as i'm listening to it now i'm realizing how incredible the guitar work is on the record because i you know heard like this oh, that's a really cool simple simple riff uh but that song is so incredibly catchy to open a record it's, it's pretty impressive it, and I, i'm upset at myself but i kind of listened to it and just didn't listen to it for a while until i started seeing the notoriety you got Mm-hmm. I, I jammed that album over and over multiple times today in the store and that song horses once i heard it once i went to the album a couple times and, and it was like horses over and over and over and over man i love that song it's a good song mm-hmm. yeah my brother and i text each other sometimes because we both love that song and all we'll write is <laughs> don't you know what it is <laughs> and that's like that's the entire text exchange I was going to say the same thing about Luke and I. Uh, he didn't make it on the podcast tonight, but every once in a while we'll just be like, you know, there's there's nothing new under the sun. <laughs> and not, I think that's a more more common phrase, but it's specific to slow mosa for us. <laughs> yeah, I really got into uh, scavengers. That's that's yeah, good one. Man. That's yeah, the one I, I tend, had loaded down. I tend to lean on like the heavier, fuzzier kind of stuff, and that one just drives. I dug Maybe. it. Yeah, yeah, that's my favorite on the record as well. Feel like mm-hmm. almost progressive, like there's a progressive nature to that song, yeah. which I, I liked. Yep. yep. It's just, it's just funny to me because <laughs> that that there is nothing new under the sun. You know, like they're most. I, I'm assuming that's the most popular song. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've actually shazammed that song. So it really took me a long time to figure out who Slow Mosa was. Oh, really? Uh, in fact, I even did it recently. We were in, you know, uh, when we played the festival in Sweden, I'm sitting there talking to a bunch of guys and we all just stopped and we go, what is that? And I, I pulled my, I mean, none of us, none of us knew who it was. I was sitting there with like a guy from Greenleaf, uh, uh, Tommy from Dozer and Greenleaf and our, Daniel Leiden, who recorded our record. And we're like, uh, who, who is this? This is a great song. I, I blamed, I, I, we all were wrong when we figured out it was La Mosa. I gave them more crap because they're from, I'm from Texas. I shouldn't know who they are from, from you know, way out in, in this area, but all those guys in Sweden and Norway should know them. But I'm saying like, it just, it really, it's amazing how much I've liked the record and just not really dove into it until this yeah. week. That song stayed on my my spotify list for like an entire year like it just was always i just never took it off but uh the the fact that you were i was gonna say the fact that you even had that that song was even playing for a group of people to to say okay well who's this you would never hear that playing anywhere in the states at a bar or or anywhere like unless it was a a promoter or somebody who was who was in the scene like say john gist in vegas he might play that up on his shows but, right, and we were at a festival, but I mean, we were at a table, and we all stopped. Like it was four of us. We all go, wait. I go, who is this? And we all were like trying to guess, guess, and I pulled. You know, I, we're in 2022 at the time, so I was like, oh, Shazam, and we figured it out. But we were well, all even. Wrong. Even that Shazam figured it out in this space. I, I don't. I don't think Shazam's going to pick up everybody uh, in the Stoner Rock scene. So, it's like impressive. that says something about 
their status. True. Yeah. What is their Spotify? Do they have a high Spotify count? I know that's sometimes. I think they've Kevin, got over a million on Kevin or Horses. Yeah, Kevin has 1.7, wow. and In My Mind's Desert wow, is just awesome. over a million. Yeah, so they've got yeah. 40, wow. 46,000 monthly listeners, which is a good number. Holy shit. And, that's that's so that's, for, a, for a one album. That's one awesome. album. Two years old. That's amazing. Looks yeah. like they got two yeah. new colors of the album, too, out. They have an orange and a, and a splatter on their uh, band camp right now. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I, yeah, orange, red splatter, and black yeah. are, are what's available right now. So I got Ryan, the white one. Uh, Ryan Foster, um, I don't know if this is on your agenda, but what do you, what do you kind of make of their single artwork? They've kind of got like this, I don't know how I would describe that like ink stroke, but it's sort of like a lazy sort of psychedelic uh, kind of line to everything. Yeah. Uh, I remember seeing In My Mind's Desert come out first before this album came out. I don't know how, how or why. Maybe it was just recommended on Spotify or something like that. And just kind of, again, dismissing them a little bit, just the way that song starts with that kind of like pop guitar work. And then looking at the art for the single, I was just like, oh, this is just kind of like some alternative rock band. I liked the song. And then I heard um, There's Nothing New Under the Sun. And then I heard the album. And then it... it just grew from there so again first like i kind of dismissed the artwork as well as the song as well as the band and everything like that but interestingly uh interestingly enough i saw them post something about the artwork for there's nothing new under the sun the woman that they drew or whoever whoever drew that she died recently it was like um i forget who she was she's in a movie or something i think and there's like a portrait of her and they drew it from that so they just posted that like a few days ago i think hmm it kind of it kind of looks like an album cover that you'd have on Real or Fuzzed. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> change something up. That you could probably do something with that one. Yeah, well, the artwork for the album uh, we kind of talked about it a little bit, but it's very simple. I mean, it's very desert rock. It's mm-hmm. literally got a, a camel on it, but it's a little iconic. I mean, it's kind of like that's their logo. It's one that people will remember for a long time. At the same time, being very simple and. There's no name to the album besides their own band name. There's not a whole lot going on. It's mostly black. It's it's black and white. It's a it's easy to dismiss again. You know, I don't. It, it's, the people, it's the catch twenty. It's the catch twenty two. Yeah. Easy to remember. Easy to forget. It, it's it's weird. You know, like yeah. I, yeah. I I know now if I see that I know it's Lamosa right away. Yeah. But well, I, I can see sounds, it on a, on a small blip. It, it kind of sounds like some sort of cocktail too. A Sunday morning brunch. Yeah. Who's got the yeah. slimosas? <laughs> <Yeah>. Exactly. <laughs> what would a slimosa? What would be? A I feel like a slimosa is a great word for a hangover. Like, yeah, man, I've got a real bad slimosa. See, I thought Me, it was like a, a mimosa with like with a quaalude. Uh, with, yeah, I was gonna say with a quaalude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mimosa with yeah. a quaalude. That's a slimosa. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Breakfast um, of champions. I kind of just started looking at the lyrics today. I couldn't find them until I realized they were obviously on Spotify already and started looking at them a little bit, but um, I didn't look, I didn't do a whole lot of homework on it. So I'll go back to my question from a few minutes ago. Does anyone know what Kevin is about or who Kevin is before we get into any other songs lyrically or anything like that? I read the lyrics, but I can't remember what they were. No. Okay. I don't. It's so really I don't have about Kevin Bacon. Right. <laughs> let's, let's say it was about Kevin Bacon, and we're just going to continue. That's going to be my guess. All right. So this is um, actually a concept album about a Kevin Bacon movie. Uh, if you put it all together, let's just keep spreading that around to people until that's it's great. hard to. Discern. We are the authorities. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're the we're the experts, so yeah. we know it's Kevin Bacon. I mean, we figured it out. Nice try. Stanley. How can we, you we not know it it's Kevin Bacon? <laughs> Well, it could be Kevin McAllister. Could Ooh, be. there we go, Kevin McAllister. Home Alone. I like that even if, better. If it had been released, if it had been released as a Christmas album, Scavengers. Maybe. I mean, that's like Joe Pesci. Horses, <laughs> uh, yeah. It, oh, I thought that was a funny. Like they have a song named Kevin, so that's kind of like, you know, they're they're having fun. So that I always like yeah. it when bands aren't too serious about themselves. Well, maybe it's Kevin James then. Maybe it's it's Paul Paul Blart. <laughs> <Paul Blart. laughs> 
I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> let's hope for Kevin um, Bacon. Let's yeah. just decide it's Kevin Bacon. All right. Uh, in my mind's desert, Blake. I know you had some thoughts on "In My Mind's Desert." Was it what was it about that song? Was it lyrically, or was it something else, or what was it? Yeah, it was very much. Well, I mean, it's the whole fucking package. Yeah. Um, I I would probably have said until it, we decided to do this album that "Horses" was my favorite song off the the record. Um, but you know, in my mind's desert, I I just was blown away by it. You know, I it was a top to bottom complete song. And I don't think I'll, I'll get a little controversial here. I don't think you necessarily always see that in stoner desert rock. Um, there, there are a lot of frankly asinine lyrics, same in doom. Don't get me mm-hmm. wrong. Like where this is not a, a, a heavy underground that necessarily specializes in, in being lyricists all the time. Um, but I felt more like about, they more really... about vibe and, and stuff like that than it is maybe lyrical content. Very much so, yes. Um, You know, and I I think all of us here who make music have probably been guilty of that at one time or another, you know, like if we're we're honest with ourselves. Um, And I think it's rare when you see a song in this space that is able to, because I I was watching some of their stuff on Instagram this week, and they actually had like a longer post about it. And because, you know, I'm not generally one of those guys that when I'm listening to Stoner or Doom, I'm just listening to the lyrics. Like, that's kind of if I if I hear something in the lyrics that I like, like, hell, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, but it's probably the last thing I'm listening to, ultimately. Sure. Um, but when I saw that there was a lot of like outreach and reaction to the song, I was like, let's actually listen to it. And it, it, it's both a, a sad song, but also a very empowering song. Yeah. Yeah, this is like, you know, occasionally you go through life and you you pick up a few songs that are important because of where you are at that point in your life. And I I was going through some weird shit around the time that I heard this song. And that line, all I know is that I've done well on my own was like super empowering. So I remember just like listening to that song, listening to that song, walking down the street, like in my feelings and just being like, yeah, I can handle it. You know, like this song's going to get me through. And so, like, this song will always have a, a soft spot in my heart because of that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't generally label something, like, in the, the heavy world as profound, per se. But I would say it's kind of a profound song to me, at least. It's so got, it's like, a, like, a sort of, like, a Robinson. Profound. Yeah, and it's profound in, like, that Robinson Caruso kind of way. Because he's talking about, like, chopping shit up and, like, building, like, your own sort of, like, paradise and stuff, too. So it's sort of like timeless in that way. Mm-hmm. Well, I think like the entire album, you can say it's it's they they know how to write songs. They're actually writing songs with lyrics that mean something to them and maybe symbolically or whatever. And like you said, most stoner rock, like you're not listening for the lyrics if you could even understand the lyrics to begin with. Like I yeah. I I don't know the lyrics to some of my favorite songs. Like. Yeah. You can't hear them because it's so loud. The guitars are so loud. The rhythm section is just pounding. You don't need to understand the lyrics. If you do, like if you're reading them while you're listening, it's it's cool. But it's not really the the norm, at least for me. And this these guys, they've it's produced so that you can hear the lyrics. And the fact that the lyrics are aren't cheesy, it, it's even that much more kudos to the band yeah yeah i like that a lot about this record is how fuzzy it is and clear it is mm-hmm. you know, it's, yes. the vocals are so Super clear fuzzy. that they, they have to write good songs around it because if they were just singing if there was like 12 songs on here just about driving through the desert it would become <laughs> cheesy very quickly because yeah. the vocals are so clear it's it's good that they wrote real songs around it <laughs> i mean we we talked about the guitars a lot but i i've I think the standout for this record is the vocals. Like the that's vocals. the standout yeah. element of this record is the vocals. Yeah. If, number one, number two, the guitar. I mean, the whole. It's it's got the whole package. So. Yeah. And the rhythm section is fucking killer. Oh, too. the bass. Like, see, I, the bass work is that's I've had that in my notes or I think in my Bandcamp review that was the first thing. This was two years ago. I, the bass stood out back then, and yeah. Yeah, that's exactly where it needs to be. It's super punchy. 
uh, with the bass and kind of hold. I think with a guitar being when it's when the guitar is so fuzzy, but it's like not a bottom end guitar. The bass is holding it down. It does a really good job. Everything, everything in this record has its space. Uh, I think it's very produced really well. I, I think it's why you can hear everything because we know Stoner Rock Doom. Give me the wall of guitars, and then the rest will figure itself out. This is like there may be only like one or two guitar tracks on the record, you know, or each any song. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the producer did a really good job of making sure everything had its own its own space because, like I said, it's fuzzy but also clear, which is really really cool. Yeah. Is there I think the closest comparison in that way? It's like Elder. They're they're the only other band that I can think, <laughs> and like some, and King Buffalo. I would say those are kind of the three bands in the sphere that really specialize in just being so fucking clear. What was the third band? Like, I didn't catch the last. Uh, said... Elder, uh, Slomosa, and King Buffalo. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Well, Did these guys was... ever play on any other bands before that anybody knows of? Bucky or anybody? What's that? Did, uh, did these guys ever play on any bands before this one? Oh, I, don't, I haven't researched just curious. that. No, sure. I, I would imagine they're probably young guys. Like a lot of these, a lot of the, you probably know Ryan going touring over in Europe, but a lot of those guys are pretty fucking young. So like, yeah, I think, I think they're younger dudes. I think, I yeah. really think they like are. Like in their 20s. Uh, like, like so that's what, that's the vibe I got when Sasquatch is telling me because I think even Sasquatch was like nervous about like, dude, we're a bunch of old dudes. We're going to go on the <laughs> road with these guys. But they, they had a great time. I think even Keith was telling me uh, a few times he even jumped on stage and was singing like, there was nothing new under the sun, like with them on stage and stuff, you know. So they all got along, so it's cool. I always find that really cool when you have young guys playing like really mature music, like um, musically mature, and that progressive song, like Scavengers in the middle. Like, I would never picture a couple of 20 year olds playing a song like that. Yeah. Is anybody looking it up? Because I don't want to chance it with the brewery, brewery Wi-Fi I'm borrowing right now. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I got I'm the not. idea that they were younger too, although I don't know that for a fact. I have no idea. I I would guess they they look younger. Their yeah. day de it's their debut. Yeah, they're at home watching this with their canes. Like what? <laughs> yeah, they're like in their forties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not every band is like Hiders or Queen that debuts a record and we're all in our 40s. So uh, it's just, it just could be it. <laughs> what is their picture? Well, it's just they, such they a mature look, album, and the way it was mastered, bad, yeah. you know, superbly mastered, I, I thought, for what they did. And it's just a mature album that it, it just it astonishes me that they're young and they come out of, of the door right out the gate with this. Anything that they could have done better on this album? Anything that you stood out that they need to work on, or would you um, you would like to see them work on, or anything like I that? I didn't like personally. I mean, I didn't like the the flow of the songs seemed a little bit off to me. Oh, they're female in the band too. Yeah, there was a yeah. There's yeah. There, oh, that's yeah, right. I saw a video. I think she's the bassist. Yeah, <laughs> get her out of there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Just she she was actually recording what it, I think some vocals on the oh, a video that they shared recently. So I wonder if they're going to add some female vocals into some of this new music they're making. That'd be and really cool. And that's one of the things I was going to be like, hey, I love the vocals, right? I, I, we all yeah. be commenting how great they are, but it would he's got a, such a unique style. It'd be cool to have some variance, yes. you know, on the record. Maybe Is like there... where there's some more melody and some singing. Maybe I thought like I thought that there was like some some vocal like harmonies from someone else in that when i was listening maybe it's just background kind of like hey ho kind of type punk stuff did they had a little but yeah the dual vocal or another vocal would add to add to the texture mm -hmm. yeah i think the only way they could get better is if they played doom instead of stoner Agreed. Shocking <laughs> comment Wait, coming I, from I would almost i would <laughs> i would even argue this isn't i I don't know. I guess i i take my i take back on that. I was gonna say it's. I would say it's not even stoner. Like it, it has, like the song in my mind's desert. Like that's total grunge. I mean that's that's yeah. an alternative yeah. rock. Yeah, so, yeah. someone said Which alternative is, rock. Which and is I think the same as stone. Like it's all kind of the same. It's hard rock. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, they were very. They're not, they're not cookie cutter stone or rock by any no. means. There's there's a lot going on no, there. A lot. Oh no, not at all. I I I don't. I, I was mostly joking. Mostly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well. Um. But no, I mean this, this is. Doom. Yeah, I mean, I think they're they're ultimately like they're they're just a rock and roll, almost a pop band. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. it's it's ultimately pop. I know none of us yeah. want to say that ugly stoner word, pop. but it, it's stoner ultimately pop. like stoner pop. Yeah. They were like very Caius-y to me. Yeah. In that in that regard, in that you know that yeah, catchy, pop. poppy. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. That's why they have so much response. I mean, if you want to be honest, that's why so yeah. many folks are love them sure. because they they've attracted the the mainstream like normie folks on the street. Yeah. yeah. Which the stuff we listen to like day to day, like the heavy stuff, like you're not going to pull those guys in. No matter how much you dream that you will, you're never going to. Well, and and, and it doesn't sound like selling out either. No, that's, that's something very important to state. I I feel like, like we've talked a lot about it's, you know, pop or catchy or, you know, melody and things like that. I don't think it's selling out. I just think it's fucking great. No. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it's on. Seems to sell this is who a lot they of, are. Is that ty- is that genre kind of that poppy mainstream Euro stuff is what Apollon seems to sell. I don't know if that's why maybe they chose them, possibly. Well, we've kind of talked about like how much the artwork influences your perception of the album a little bit. And we just talked about on the recent episode with Haze Maze how like the album cover says Doom, but they're it's not necessarily a Doom album. And the same with this one. I feel like, I mean, you have a camel and like you know, essentially a pyramid. You're going to think desert rock and it's not necessarily desert rock or stoner rock, but I mean, your mind goes there right away and there's enough like fuzz and like riffs and stuff on there that you go, well, that's what this is. But if that cover would have been like bright pink and some flowers or something on it, you could just say, this is a pop rock alternative album. Sure. Yep. Mm-hmm. And back to like what, could they have done better like maybe for their next album maybe maybe put a little more thought into the album cover do you, like mix it up make it a little cooler like not so simple even though the simplicity kind of works yeah then that like to me that that could have drawn more folks in if it had a, a better art artwork. well the next one i'm assuming is not going to be self-titled so they're going to have to do something with it they're going to have to go somewhere with the concept at least so yeah I think I'm going to mail them an HM2 and see what happens. Send them a fuzz. Fuzz up a little hardware for them. (laughs) Well, is there anything else that we want to say about this album that hasn't been said? I think Bucky hit the nail on the head earlier about how uh, album two is, I mean, no pressure. You've got a million freaking something listens on album one. There's going to be people listening to album two, and that that sophomore album can a lot of, for a lot of bands is like, okay, I believe in these guys, or no nope, fluke. So it's mm-hmm. it's going to be interesting to see. I'm I'm excited to hear it because as I dove in this week about this record, I've really enjoyed it, and I, I'm going to be missing for some of the same aspects on the next record. But I we always hope that it. I hope that when we do this podcast for their second record, we use the word matured. Or that we've only that we always use way too much, you know. I'm sure we will. But uh, matured but, and Sabathian. Uh, yeah, Sabathian yeah. to a yeah. 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 What was that? What was that album? Like Haze Maze. Okay, Haze. Yeah, yeah. But I've seen some bands that kind of teeter between like stoner rock and like pop, and they seem to kind of shy away from that label, and they do tours with more like pop rock bands, and they're they're clearly trying to shy away from it. Whereas Slowmosa seems to lean into it. I mean, if they're if they're doing shows with Sasquatch and Orange Goblin, like seems like that they're not trying to shy away from it. They're trying to lean into it. So we can only hope for a heavier or whatever album next, and not uh, not the opposite. Amen. Yeah, yeah and I I, with, I find it there. cool. I find I I found it kind of interesting. I thought about it a little bit, like just doing these kind of shows where you get a group and you break down an album and it forces you to go back and really listen to it more and more like you you if it's a good album you actually you learn to like it even more like even it's like i i bought this one when it came out i i liked it it was it was one of my favorites of the year for debuts for sure 
But after this week of just kind of listening back to it more and more, I'm like, oh yeah, fuck, fuck. I really do like this record. That's so it kind of with with having hundreds and thousands of records coming out every year, it's like I I rarely go back and listen to a repeat albums very often. Two three times, like if they're lucky. But you do it two, three times, four or five times in one week, then you could really like get an appreciation for them. So, yeah, no. I think we've all felt yeah. that listening to these albums in the last like 12 episodes, just being like, I kind of dismissed this record or that record, but diving in for a week and a half, like it completely changes your perception of the record and you find things you like about it, stuff you missed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, Which uh, scares me because this how many am I missing? How many, how many albums am I missing that we're not, that yeah. we're not highlighting? Uh, a lot. Show, you know? a lot yeah yeah the you could only do it with good records so i couldn't sit here for a week and listen to a shitty record i i turn it off like i i just unless we were getting paid to do it it like, would be interesting to deep dive a really shitty record that we all hated <laughs> hey i'm a hundred percent in on that let's, 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 <laughs> find a shitty record. let's do it a record that gonna... i really thought was really really bad for a long time but uh for some reason it kind of started growing on me maybe i hated it so much man <laughs> so. i didn't want to say what it is but we could talk about it <laughs> well, I, I listened to the uh the monolord review just the other day that you did back in uh, december or something yeah and i wish i would have been on that one <laughs> but uh i missed it um have some thoughts there but I pretty much <laughs> agree mean? with what most of you guys said yeah. i'll leave it there so <laughs> we were talking about shitty records but I yeah, interesting it. segue on that there bucky interesting segue. <laughs> No, I that that record was the first record I really liked from the Monolord. Like that's they matured on that record. And then the the one the follow up to that last year, or was it two years ago, was like hands down my favorite Monolord record. Yeah, last year was your time to shine, which I last year was that. their time to shine and they shot they they shined yeah. for me. <laughs> I would agree with that. But before that, yeah, their their first few, like I was I was the guy like not not buying into the hype. Yeah. <laughs> but I much respect because their live shows are fucking awesome. Exactly. That's what turned me on to live That's, shows. Which yeah, do you see a lot of bands? Or yes. yeah, I saw them at Psycho and it was fucking mind blowing. <laughs> Now we got to find a way to get Slamosa to the States. Uh, believe me, I've already tried. It ain't happened this year. Yeah. But uh, I, I, you got to get them up. Because apparently, from what the Sasquatch boys tell me, like seeing these guys live is great. High energy. You got to imagine with those those high energy riffs, it's probably really, really, really fun live. So I bet. Yeah. Uh, we gotta, I'd, I'd like to do that. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Anything else about uh, Slamosa? All right. I want, to, I want to try to see if I can get some copies for the Cosmic Peddler. If anybody wants any, man, I'll, I'll try to hit them up this week and see if I can get a stash of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I will say one more thing. I think that that album went out with a bang with Psycho Not. Mm-hmm. That was that was awesome going out. That 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 was my second favorite song. Yeah. Psycho Not. Yeah. Another one just rocks on the way out. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. With a K, Psychonaut with a K. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Tractor with a K also. Yeah, I missed that too. All right. Um, hey, why don't we let everyone know what we're all up to and we'll wrap this thing up. Chris, you want to lead us off? Uh, yeah, we finally, I've, I've been saying the last couple of times I've been on here with you that we're getting ready to release that new single. We finally are. We, finally, we were waiting on Jeff Matz to finish up the guitar solo which he did um and has been mixed it today he's gonna master it tomorrow and it looks like very first that'll be out and that one's got jeff matz and has been doing vocals um on it so it's gonna be really cool very cool i'm looking forward to that man yeah, thank uh, you, thank you. i fly out tomorrow to vegas we're playing a show uh saturday night with nebula and our good buds the salem's Band. Uh, but I'm going to go see the show tomorrow night with John Garcia and Steak. 
um, Formula One. That'll be a really, really fun show. And then we're, we, we get back. We're going in the studio finally to record. Uh, cuts and delays. But we're, it's booked. We're recording. We've announced Desert Fest London. Awesome. We'll be announcing Desert Fest Berlin next week. Um, nice. We've got several, several festivals, and we'll, we'll probably be announcing our six-week tour in Europe uh, this summer throughout the UK and Europe, which I can't wait. Who will be letting everyone know who we're touring with and then uh, where we're playing. I can't wait. Awesome. awesome. Blake? Uh, just starting to uh, rehearse with uh, the new iteration of IWAS, so uh, really excited about that. And uh, I know I keep teasing this, but we'll have some news about uh, the release of the second album in uh, coming weeks. Sweet. Eddie? Um, so, still in the middle of working towards the albums for both bands, and I'm be starting to put some things together for a solo project in between all that this year. Very cool. So I'm kind of back in the mix. I took some time off the last couple of years. I never really went anywhere, moved to Denver. I'm running the uh, Doom Charts Twitter handle. It's kind of my social media. I'm not on any other social right now, but so you can hit me up there. And then with like Pat and the, some of the guys, we got a lot of contributors and it's, it's just an ongoing project that's, a lot of passion going on and if you're in denver and want to go to a show hit me up there's tons of music tons of tour announcements just come out like this week that's, yeah they're and they're all stopping in denver which i love so very cool i should be in denver for work in like march i wonder if there's anything going on when i'm out there yeah there's probably some shows that's the beautiful um, thing about denver is if anybody's touring there's a long road before that and after that. So Denver's is where you got to stop. That's perfect. Yeah. Cool. Bet. Uh, as, as Bucky mentioned, uh, just trying to keep up with the doom charts and then uh, still getting an album or not an album, at least an article out every week on monster. If so stop by for some stoner rock stuff. Paul. Oh, I'm just uh, trying to stay afloat. Got a lot of stuff going on. I, uh, I'm, I'm working on month three on my new store. Um, I'm working on about 30, 45 days. I've been working with Fuzzarama. We reopened the USA store uh, under the Cosmic Peddler. I'm, I'm shipping all the Fuzzarama stuff. Um, but we're not 100% yet, but, but we got most of it up there. So, so I'm doing that. And then um, I'm getting ready to put out my first. Actually, next week, I'm going to go pick up the records. And I'll have my first solo project with a band from New York. And uh, Pat from Monster Riff is going to be helping me out. And uh, we're going to do a little tour, uh, th three-day tour in April, five, six, seven, April, uh, Dallas, Austin, and uh, probably San Antonio uh, on the last one. And we're going to do a record tour, you know, release. And so um, we'll, we'll be putting that out here pretty soon. Sweet. All right. Well, everyone go check out Slow Mosa. I can't recommend it enough. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Yeah, yeah. Later. Cheers, guys. <laughs>